episode 33. Let's do this. This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Welcome back, Architect Nation. This is Enoch, and Business of Architecture is the show where we discuss running a great practice so you can quit worrying about paying the bills and focus instead on creating great architecture and leaving a lasting legacy. I invited today's guest to be on the show because of the success he's been having helping architects get more project and more leads through the internet. This is your host, Enoch Sears, and today I have the privilege of having Eric Bobro on with us. Eric is a technology consultant for architects, and recently he's been getting more into using technology for marketing for architects. And I've become good friends with Eric over the past, what, past four months, Eric? Yeah. yeah. So first of all, Eric, just welcome to the show. Thank you, Enoch. It's my pleasure. And you know, I'm very glad to have you on here because we're going to be talking a little bit about something that you've been working on a lot over the past couple of years, and that's online marketing for architects. In other words, you know, everything about an architect's website, you know, what architects can do to have a successful website, in addition, how they can drive traffic to that website. I mean, I've studied a lot of the material you have out there, and it is just definitely top-notch for architects. So I'm really looking forward to um, sharing some of this information with our listeners today. Yeah, I'm glad to have some time with you. Uh, I think there's a lot that we share in common, but I came from a somewhat different path. I know you're an architect, but I came from the computer side and started working with architects back in 1989. So I have worked with architects for a very long time, helping them use uh, CAD software, ArchiCAD primarily, um, and uh, becoming an expert trainer. But uh, over the years, I've found that technology is used in so many ways, and one part is just you know, marketing, just getting the word out about whatever it is that you have to offer. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I think I was naive, like you know, a lot of people are until they learn. You know, if you just put up something and you say, here's what I have for you, you, know, you sort of expect that people will say, hmm, that looks, that looks good. Um, I want to know more about it. And while that's part of the answer is to say, you know, here's who I am and what I have. Um, it's really only part. And uh, so that's what I've been learning in recent years. You know, Eric, you have another interesting family tidbit, too, that you actually have a brother who's an architect. Tell me just a little bit about that. Yeah, my brother Michael is actually 15 years older than me, so he's retired now. Uh, but he's a fellow of the AIA and had a firm, Barbara Thomas Associates, that did a lot of hospitals and uh, um, I guess uh, buildings at universities like Stanford University. So they, uh, they were a rather large firm for many years. And uh, it was always in my um, you know, family background because he was quite a bit older, you know, that architecture was a fascinating profession. So even though I got my degree in computers, uh, you know, I was attracted to architecture. And when the opportunity came to work with architects with uh, some 3D CAD software back in the late 80s, early 90s, um, you know, something that just came naturally. So I've, I've loved working with architects all of this time. Nice. Now, you may be too modest to say this, Eric, but I'll go ahead and tell our listeners that you're probably the one of the, if not the top guru in terms of Archicad training. And you have a very popular YouTube channel that you've built up over time. And it's really been successful in, uh, you've been successful in marketing yourself through online media and primarily your YouTube channel. Would you just give us a little background on history of sort of how you went from being a more traditional, you know, selling the products and training to getting more into the online space? Yeah, it was an interesting journey. Um, you know, for many years as a reseller of ArchiCAD, I relied on lead generation uh, to come from the head office. So if someone was interested in the software and they contacted Graphisoft, then, you know, Graphisoft would distribute the lead to whoever was the reseller or dealer in that area. So my job of a website, in my case, when I started in the mid-90s, like 97, I think I put up my first website, uh, was simply to just say, you know, how to reach me and, you know, what were the training classes and, and maybe just to say that ArchiCAD was a great tool. Uh, but when I, I think about 2006 or 7, I started to uh, realize that I wanted to broaden my base and reach people who 
uh, I could help beyond that. And so I, I started learning, um, you know, to do advertising, uh, AdWords, creating uh, articles, tips and tricks to just essentially share my knowledge with people and get them published on the web and introduced a product called Master Template, uh, for, which is an add-on for Archicad. And the challenge is sort of strangely similar to what an architect faces, and that is there were people out there who could use what I had to offer but didn't know who I was. How could I reach them? Just like you, uh, all architects and designers, um, you know, are able to design buildings, whether it's homes or hospitals or something else. And how do you reach the ones who want or need you know, a home or a green architecture, you know, uh, uh, you know, re retrofit or things like that. So uh, I learned ways to basically share information, you know, in other words, become an expert by sharing what I had learned um, and uh, develop a reputation for that. People were then attracted to say, oh, well, he seems to know a lot. Let me find out more. And ultimately, I developed a whole strategy for reaching out and um, offering a lot of value first and without me being going out there and let's say traveling you know the country uh, you know spending a lot of my personal time but using technology to share that so that by the time people came to talk to me or, or send me an email they were pretty much ready to talk seriously about you know well so you have a course you have something you know tell me about this offering you have now, what I've learned in recent years is, you know, with uh, working with architects is that architects have typically focused their websites on, um, you know, here's who I am, here's the projects that I've done or that we've done, you know, here's the depth of experience that we have, and it's all about them, you know, natural and saying, here's our firm, um, but it's not sharing as much useful information or resources to help people solve their problems, and so. Uh, as I've adapted what I learned in the technology sector, sharing you know, training for Archicad and resources for Archicad to helping architects actually reach out to prospects, client, people who could become clients, um, it's very interesting parallels. You, know, you can really uh, use these approaches to, um, you know, to reach a much wider audience and to reach them earlier in the process you know, before they're actually ready to talk to someone but while they're researching to try to solve their problems. It's been a very interesting uh, discovery process. Very, very interesting. So, Eric, you mentioned talking about producing content that shares your expertise and your knowledge, and I know we've talked together a lot about how architects are uniquely positioned as people that have this great resource of technical knowledge. And to the layperson, is quite impressive. You know, I think architects generally have a pretty good reputation or view as pretty respected professionals. Um, but then there's that barrier of people understanding what an architect does and then actually the architect being able to um, be truly understood and valued for what they do. You know? Yeah. I think that, you know, one of the fears that I hear from architects as I, you know, talk day-to-day uh, -day is about being a commodity, about being seen as someone who just provides uh, a deliverable. I mean, you do have to provide drawings at the end of the day um, or reports or, you know, other things, but primarily drawings. Uh, and so people say, you know, what's your price on blueprints? You know, what's your price on drawings or, or, or doing this type of a project? And uh, to shift the conversation from, you know, how much does it cost for this end product to how much value can you as an architect, as a designer, bring to the process? How can you maximize the, um, you know, the usability or, you know, the beauty of a space or optimize the budget? Uh, you know, these are things that uh, I think uh, the more that our clients understand the value that we bring, the, you know, intelligence and um, expertise and wisdom, in fact, uh, to be able to find creative solutions, it takes it away from, you know, while well, you're your fees are higher, you know, or what, what's the best fee you can give me? Um, you know, I've been talking to some architects who say, you know, some of their, um, you know, projects, how they've been able to exceed the expectations of the uh, client uh, because they were doing good design. So one architect 
had a multi-unit project and there were so many units that the developer was expecting to be able to put into the property based on you know the various constraints for height and, and other things and he was able to redesign it so that there were quite a few more units I think at least 20 percent more units um, on there now this made a huge difference for that developer in terms of the feasibility of the project and the profitability and that's the sort of thing that goes way beyond you know well what's your fee you know words, if you can actually make something better you know, strong, stronger, more beautiful, more efficient, you know, lower cost to run, whatever it is, or make a make rooms that are more multi-purpose that can solve more of uh, what a family needs, um, then you're providing far more than just drawings that create a, a space. And so part of what I've been learning is, is how do you establish that understanding that people, that you can bring this, and a story is a very interesting thing, is telling stories like I just did. Um, is a story, or the story of me and my brother and, and things, that's a story, but uh, it also allows people to connect. So hopefully, as you know, you're hearing me, Enoch, and, and, and others, you know, you're getting a sense of who I am, and so I become not just, you know, a, a person who can provide a deliverable, but I become a human being who has imagination and creativity. So these are some of the things that I see architects almost are shy about. In other words, they're they, they want to just put up pictures of the buildings and not talk about themselves and uh, or, or not share some of the war stories of, you know, God, we had this hard time getting a permit for this because the city was requiring that. And then, you know, so w what have you done as an architect that actually solved a big problem for a client? And, you know, the more you can make that real and visceral, the more people will say, I want some of that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's an excellent example of how architects, I think, every day bring value to their clients in that form, whether it's being able to come up with a creative design solution that's able to maximize the revenue for the client or provide a better outcome, you know. So could you, I know we don't have enough time in this, in this particular interview to really dive into the nuts and bolts of architects' websites and marketing online and all that, but since I do have you on the line right now, could you just sort of tell me a general framework about how an architect would think about trying to translate this value that they provide and have that reflected on the website? Well, as I said, stories are one way to communicate value because people understand similarities. Well, my situation is sort of similar to that. Well, maybe this architect can provide that type of solution for me. Um, I think that... Uh, People are researching on the internet for solutions to problems. I mean, it may be my problem is I need an architect, so I have to find one. But early on, they're looking at, you know, well, I wonder how much this project will cost, or I, you know, I wonder you know, how I'm going to find the right person and, and how to choose. So they, they have questions about the process. So these are things that, you know, by putting information on a website that you can actually, um, you know, provide a service and build up a sense of, um, uh, let's say, trust. People can see what you've got and say, hmm, uh, I like this person or this company there. So a website having more content is a, is a key thing. It also helps a website to rank in terms of search. In other words, when someone's typing in a search, what will Google pick? They have to pick something. Someone types in Modern Architect Los Angeles, they'll show some websites of architects, but who are they going to pick? They're going to pick you know, a, a website or a series of websites that have more content generally rather than just prettier pictures because in fact Google can't even decide, you know, whether a picture is beautiful or not. Um, so what we found is, uh, you know, with some of the architects I've been working with is that putting up more content can and doing some other strategies to improve the search engine ranking can bring a lot more visitors and if you do it in the right way, you can get just a lot more inquiries for work. Um, a firm in the UK that uh, we've been working with over the last year, a little over a year, um, formerly had, there were only three people, and they formerly had no work coming from the website. And they said maybe once every month or two they got an email or something saying, I saw your website. But now they're getting inquiries every week, uh, you know, quite a few each month. Uh, they booked, I think it was close to $500,000 of design contracts in the last 12 months from website inquiries. Uh, you know, they were one of the ones that uh, I would say took what I taught and just ran with it. They said, all right, that sounds good, let's do it. And got some help, you know, actually I've been 
uh, with my team, you know, been helping develop their website and, uh, you know, making it effective. But uh, this is the sort of thing that architects can do. We've also, you and I shared uh, uh, contact with uh, Mona Quinn in, um, down in, uh, in New Zealand. So two, two opposite poles of the world, you know, the UK and, and New Zealand, who, uh, you know, with the help of a marketing consultant was able to just essentially reposition herself and become the go-to for a particular type of architecture um, in her area. Uh, so I think the results can be amazing. You know, internet marketing strategies can make a huge difference in, in this regard. Interesting. Well, both you and I have discussed this before, but we see that there's huge potential there because it's still such a young field for architects getting online and spreading their message that we're actually collaborating on projects and reaching out to architects and helping them through this process. So maybe could you tell people a little bit about what you and I are doing together in terms of websites and the kind of stuff we're experimenting with and starting to discover? Yeah, I think probably the most important thing for people to understand is that uh, we come to it from a background. I've worked with architects for 24 years, and, and you are an architect. We come with the ability to um, work on a website with a strategic perspective. So it's not just about aesthetics, and it's not just about um, uh, you know, what, a, what a website in general is about. It's about an architect's website. So what is an architect's point of view, and what does a, a client need to see and learn about from an architect? So, uh, I think it's it's really exciting to be working with you and to be developing websites for architects uh, that can be just much more um, fitting, you know, uh, for the architect rather than you know going to general marketing firms or general website development companies. So I think that's one of the things I'm so excited about is working together. We we bring in the technology and the arch architecture um, experience and the professional, uh, you know, just understanding in a way that's probably pretty unique. Absolutely. And you know, Eric, that's why it's pretty exciting and fun for me to be able to collaborate with you because it really feels like we're going into uncharted territory. I don't know that there's a lot of people out there doing this kind of thing uh, with the cutting edge sort of online strategies that, that we're kind of experimenting with. Um, so without getting on track off on, on that tangent, you are going to be sharing a, a free training later on in December. Um, going over some of the strategies that you have been experimenting with for the past year or so. So could you just tell our audience a little bit about that? Yeah, I've um, put together an hour-long um, training on some of the things that I think will really immediately benefit an architect or a small firm uh, in, in terms of their online presence. So uh, there are common mistakes that architects make in terms of just how to approach a website that I've uh, sort of cataloged, you know, I've gone through dozens and dozens of architect websites to look what works, what doesn't, and, you know, come up with, you know, a number of common mistakes. So I'm going to be sharing that. I think once you understand what to avoid, you can definitely have a better shot at an effective website. And then I'm also, uh, I've got a list of sort of easy things that you can do that you can add to your website to make it a richer resource for um, uh, potential clients to visit spend time, engage, learn, and ultimately when you do this you position yourself as an expert, as a resource that people will want to work with, not just as someone who creates you know, beautiful buildings, but someone who actually understands in depth the problems that they're facing and can you know, offer solutions. So uh, I'm going to be teaching both the, the mistakes and some of the opportunities that you have, as well as trying to give an overview I think it, there's this mystery about online, you know, well, you just put up a website and uh, hope that works, you know, but really there's a whole science, one could say, to generating traffic, you know, uh, having a website that can uh, capture leads, basically, uh, the people who visit, converting them from an anonymous visitor to uh, a lead that you can actually stay in touch with, um, and ultimately a prospect or someone who you have conversations with and potentially can win their project. So I teach, um, you know, in the, the webinar an overview of how all of these pieces fit together and how you can do certain things that'll help on multiple levels. And I, you know, some of the sort of key things, just avoid this and, and add these things in and you're going to be much better. 
So uh, I'm very excited to share it. I developed uh, this training program uh, webinar uh, last year, and I'm revamping it for uh, this go-round with some of the things that I've been working on this past year. And uh, you know, I'm really excited to to bring the Internet Marketing for Architects training, you know, to to all of you. Okay. Well, Eric, you've you've sort of given us a little little tidbits and little teasers of what that of what that online training will be about in that webinar and a little bit about your your course internet marketing for architects but you know g give us something right now come on give us give us maybe just one one tip that our listeners can go away with today and change on their website that can help them have better success with online marketing okay well uh there's something in uh, marketing, it's, uh, it's an area of marketing called direct response. And so direct response is basically where instead of just saying here and being, you know, silent, you say, take this or call or give me your email address and I will give you something. So you're asking for a response from those people who visit. So on a, many architects websites, you just have a phone number somewhere. And maybe there's a contact page, so if someone looks, says, oh, there's oh, contact, okay. So if they're ready, they will do that. But instead, offer them something, the visitors something, that they can download that is information and ask for their email address so that you can stay in touch. This is a way that you can offer something in exchange, so you're not just saying, give me your email address and I'll give you my newsletter. I mean, that's okay, but offer some information. Um, now, uh, what, what is that information? What could it be? It could be a report on something that you've been learning about, maybe green architecture. It could be some tips for homeowners to how to avoid problems in a remodel. There are different things that you can offer, but having, uh, asking for a specific action to be taken is something that I think everyone, if you think about it, what can you ask someone to do that would be a step in the journey towards them getting to know you and trust you? Interesting. Very, very powerful. And you, I, I mean, obviously that's something that we work on together and something that we're both implementing and I've seen it be successful in other architects' websites. You know, I have gotten a lot of questions from architects out there, people who respond to me and are on my email list. They're asking me, you know, Enoch, what kind of content should I create or how should I go about creating this, this educational offer? Because I think this is more people are starting to understand that they need the content to engage people on their websites, but they're not quite sure where to go from there, you know, how to figure out what to write. Do you have any suggestions from your experience about how they could start to craft something like that? Um. There's a, something I've learned a while ago, <clears throat> uh, you know, there's the concept of frequently asked questions. So if you think about uh, when you meet with a client, what are some of the things that they ask? You know, they may ask, well, how much does it cost? Or they may say, um, how does this work? When I say, you know, or they may say, how long does it take to do a project? So these are frequently asked questions. There may be uh, questions that people uh, should ask that they don't you know, like um, that they, they should be asking um, about uh, the feasibility of things or, or uh, you know, are, is there a better solution to such and such or uh, why should I not do certain things? Uh, there could be a whole variety of those things. So if you, if you compile some of those questions and your answers um, ahead of time, it does a variety of things. It, it establishes you as an expert. Um, it also uh, sort of sets, sets up that they're not going to be asking those questions as much when they do talk to you. You can go on to the meat of the matter. So tell me about your, you know, your project. You want to add on a second floor to your house, or you want to do, um, you know, build a new office space, or things like that. Um, so I think thinking about what people are, what problems people have, and thinking about if someone were to sit down and ask you about it, what would you say? Um, and then writing it up a little bit more formally, maybe with some pictures. That's that's something that could very well attract someone's interest. Excellent. Eric, you recently celebrated over 1 million views on your YouTube channel, which is that's just remarkable. And I would just like to ask you, have a short conversation with you about your thoughts on architects and video. Is there anything that you learned through that process? Let's talk about YouTube for a minute since you have, you've done it. Um, you know, do you think there's any potential there for architects to utilize YouTube? Well, I think that <clears throat> video can be used to communicate more information more quickly than text. <clears throat> and there's certainly a place for 
uh, written matter and, and you know pages of content on, on the web as well. But video, you can talk very quickly and explain things. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing is that video, if you do do a face-to-face -face, like what we're doing here, people get to know who you are or they get a feel for who you are. Um, so whether it's uh, just a, a quicker way to communicate um, you know, knowledge or a way to communicate your person, who you are, um, they both have a, a purpose there. Now, if an architect creates a YouTube channel and, and it's free to do that, it's not likely that you know instantly you're going to get people saying, oh, I, I found your YouTube videos about such and such. That, that would take some time, but one of the things you can do is you can actually create it, post it on YouTube, and then put a copy on your website, and it becomes just a free way to host or, or sort of place the video files and make it easy to have on your website. And so those videos can be, you know, of course, answering some of those questions. They can be introducing yourself, uh, even telling stories, you know. Um, so uh, we specialize in hospitals, and, you know, we're asked all the time is about, you know, how long the process takes and, and about the issues with code requirements or earthquake or this or that. And, you know, here's a couple of things that you should be thinking, you know. So this is just talking to someone. Probably the most interesting thing that I think when I think about video is I can be one person talking to you, Enoch, or talking to other people who are watching this interview. Most of the time, it's one person watching. I mean, there might be a small group around a, a table, three or four or something. Uh, I'm like. sure in this interview, there's probably crowds. I mean, let's not okay. underestimate. <laughs> yeah. um, but <clears throat> when I'm thinking of it, I'm talking to you, Enoch. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, looking in the camera, but I'm thinking about you being on the other side. And so uh, as an architect, instead of just trying to think about broadcasting or like what would you say in front of a group of 50 people or, you know, hundreds of people say, what would you say to the one person who says, I have a question, you know, so video is a great way to communicate, you know, essentially very personally with someone. Excellent. And in terms of specific strategies that architects might use to get clients or get more exposure via YouTube, any additional thoughts on that? Well, I think that it's so easy to create this. I mean, in other words, you get a, a webcam or webcams come on, on um, uh, you know, laptops or you can buy a, a webcam to sit on your monitor for 50 or $60. Uh, no reason not to just make it a regular part of your communication with clients and, and uh, prospects. Uh, YouTube is free. You know, the website, the web content, once you have a website set up, it can be very easy to add that. So I think having having video as a regular part of what you do is an easy thing to add and it would probably differentiate you as an architect. Um, think about how many architects are doing that, not too many, but, you know, would, would someone be interested if you had an explanation of the latest trends in green architecture and it was on your website and they were looking for green architecture? They might very well say, let me just listen. And it could be a two-minute tip about, you know, some of the new materials that now are being recycled and reused. And it could be something that they go, wow, really nice to, to learn from this person. Or, to you know, I want to think about using this firm. Excellent. Well, Eric, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. We've run up against the end of our time together. So once again, thank you for being on. And I will definitely include in the show notes of today's show a link to uh, where people can go to who are interested in signing up for that free online training. Okay, well, thank you for giving me a chance to talk to you as well as to your audience. And uh, hopefully some of you will be joining us for, for the upcoming training. Absolutely, Eric. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep, bye-bye. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you as an architect can raise your fees, land the projects you love to work on, and get the time in your day back, join the members-only Business of Architecture Insider list for free by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash free. Enter your best email address there, and I will send you instant access to free resources, including my book, Social Media for Architects. 
If you'd like to discuss a thought or insight from today's show, visit businessofarchitecture.com slash podcast. On that page, you'll also find my notes from today's show and the action items I took away from our conversation. Until next week, keep rocking and go conquer the world. views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host and i make no representation promise guarantee pledge warranty contract bond or commitment except to help architects conquer the world bump music credit to ben folds five do it anyway